hit record and we are live so yeah today i'm going to be talking about the european markets and as you can see i've already opened uh, the gbp usd uh the, the the pair itself so welcome to today's session and i'm going to be taking you through uh, the European markets, why you should be buying into the European markets and how to protect yourself from uh, volatility uh, that you can put your stop loss. So let's start. One thing you should know is that uh, by the end of May, which is on May 20, what? 20, 31st, 20th, 31st, May 31st is when they expect uh, the European side expect to open up the economy and with opening of the economy comes a lot of things so you really need to know what drives the uk economy so what drives the uk economy uh the gdp what the major contributions to the gdp includes uh 1.6 percent agriculture which is not much so if you ever see any news on agriculture uh, concerning the european side just know it's not a uh, huge uh impact or is is not a huge factor if i may say so uh then 25.6 percent is industry uh this is the manufacturing uh everything you need to know about manufacturing and by manufacturing i mean the cars the industries uh everything that concerns uh industry business and services and uh, things like uh for example here in kenya let's say vinyozi uh concierge services these are the, the services, yani, the things that you do not carry home. Like, I, I believe you understand what we mean by services. And as you can see, services contribute to 74% of the GDP in the European side. It hasn't changed much, even if the report is from 2017, it hasn't changed much because Europe has not uh, uh, gone through uh, an industrial revolution per se. Uh, for lack of a better word. So it's still uh, in the high percentages for services. Uh, and with this information, you need to realize, uh, you need to start doing your own analysis to know what should drive, uh, what drives uh, these economies, as you've seen, it's services. So when you come to the economic calendar for, the, for this week, uh, let's see. As you can see, uh, during the first week on Tuesday, on May 4th, the manufacturing PMI data was released, which uh, it was ex previously was 58%, uh, forecast was 60.7, and as you can see, manufacturing PMI is 60.9, which is quite good. I no doubt about that, which is quite good. So with that being, with that being said, uh, if we check if we check manufacturing PMI over the years, uh, of which I will do so, you can see, let's, uh, this is the maximum here. Let's see, a line chart is better. As you can see during COVID time, when the everything dropped uh, to, 32, to a low of 32.6%, I really need you to look at this chart uh, and I wanted to see some similarities from january 2009 uh, after the recession u.s recession once we started coming back climbing 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 all the way up to a 60 uh point 61.5 percent uh, manufacturing pmi which was an all-time high i need to, to look at this chart and once you unzoom this chart you will see you will see not many major differences if you compare the two, because manufacturing, as I've told you, in the European side is not as as heavy as this other side of the world. So it's not like the American, uh, which the industry is heavier. Uh, US is built on manufacturing, which comprises of heavy, a lot of, uh, you know, construction, a lot of uh, industries being there, you, a lot of manufacturing, just a lot of manufacturing and exportation, which makes it uh, the largest economy in the world. But for the European side, we come over to news today. The news for today, on Thursday, we see services PMI, uh, which is the largest, as I've shown you here, which contributes to 74% of the European GDP. 
of the Euro European Union GDP, which contributes 74 percent. So uh, when you come here and you check uh, services PMI, a previous of 56, 60, and now it is a 61 percent, which means uh, they expect uh, growth to come through for the European side. So I will just open a chart for you here and give you, change it to maximum, then a line chart. As you can see, if you, if you can actually follow this and compare it to this, you will actually see uh, at an all time high of 2007, let's see. Uh, my chart doesn't go back that much, let's see. Mm -hmm. This was when? 2013, let's check 2013. As you can see 2013, it was at around an all time high during this period before the decline started. As you can see once 2013 hit, as you can see the steady decline uh, in the service PMI. And in, since 2013, you can see a decline. As you can see November 2013, a steady decline in the European side. But now since we can see uh, the service PMI heading to an all time high. Uh, now, since we can see uh, the European economy pushing uh, the service PMI pushing to an all time high, which we can expect uh, to see strength in uh, the in in the pound. Now, the only thing that I'm going to be cautioning you about uh, during this time is uh, uh, something that I really like to tell people about, which is this, uh, the interest rates and inflation rates. Uh, as you compare trading, actually trading this pair is one of the riskiest pairs you can trade. Because of, even if you understand those factors, you really need to look for a pair that isn't as affected as that. As you can see, interest rate uh, 0.1, inflation 0.7, you can see 0.25, 2.6, so it's going to be always fighting. So the best thing to do is look for a pair with negative interest rates. And which pair do we know that has negative interest rates? GBP, JPY. Uh, the pound against uh, the Japanese yen, which is a very, very good trade that you should take uh, for the long-term buy. Because as you've seen, as I've told you here, the services PMI, uh, for the one joining us, uh, services contribute to 74% of uh, the GDP economy on the European side. So uh, this is a very good long-term trade. You can be taking trades, uh, continuous buys as we continue to see uh, a move towards the upside. The other thing we should, we should actually consider doing, now this is for the indices. Uh, the indices like UK, UKX, this is one of the indices that you should be actually buying right now. Uh, this is because as I've shown you during, as you've seen all that data that I've currently presented to you, you should take into consideration one thing. Uh, it is the only it is the only pair it is the only index that hasn't recovered uh pre covid times as you can see uh pre covid times it was at an all time high of 79 but as you can see currently we are at 70.63 which is quite uh, a a bargain if you ask me it's not it's not down mm -hmm. here as it as it was but it's a bargain but because as you can see uh, with the leading in co economic indicators, this is a very good buy in the long term. So keep your eyes out for the UK index. Now, before you go buying uh, these pairs, there is something you need to do more research on. Uh, the volatility in these pairs can be very confusing. Uh, what do I mean by confusing? Uh, let me show you. So. You come to tools, forex volatility. There is one for there is one for indices, and one for indices. Once you be once you've played in this game for for a while, you will know that uh, unless it's a global event like global catastrophic event, uh, we all know that 
you should be knowing that uh, the movement of this thing is roughly 10%. Let me show you. 10% volatility. Now this is how you place your stop losses. I remember I did a class on risk management uh, that I did not quite finish, but I will finish for you in a, on a later date. It was the most requested class after that. So the thing you should know is before you place in your trades, you should account for volatility so and where to put your stop loss. As you've, as I've told you, you should always look out for a 10% uh, volatility change. So if you are going to, this is on a monthly scale, uh, if you change this on a daily, let me, let me explain to you what I mean using uh, pairs. So this is a volatility uh, calculator, Forex volatility calculator. As you can see, we have a lot of pairs here. I've uh, decided to use Euro USD. So as you can see, hours, volatility, uh, this is weekly. So you need to know how volatile these pairs are during uh, the, the day, the week, and the month. That's the most important day, week, and month so that you can know where to place your stop loss. Let's say, for example, now this is now this they calculate using pips. So in Monday, uh, it was at around 70, the other time 75, Wednesday like that. So if you do an average of this during the volatility, it will come to roughly 70, 70 pips. So whenever you're going to place your trades, before you enter a trade, if it's an, at an all-time high, if you don't know how to use the Fibonacci retracements, which I highly recommend that you know how to do, always uh, use... Uh, the the volatility the volatility calculator but this is for but this uses pips the best one uses uh, percentages i tried to look for it but i couldn't find a website that actually does that for you but uh on average let me just uh move it to a daily a 10 percent let's see a 10% a 10% change that is volatility so even if you decide even if you decide to put your stop loss on a daily as you can see this is for a daily even if you decide to put uh, your stop loss at around uh, this as you can see it is almost respecting uh, all the support and resistance from uh, its all time high which is currently there as you can see 10.23% you can see where the where the stop loss is, uh, where the support and resistance actually occurs at around this price. So if you put your stop loss below here, you, this is a daily chart. As you can see, this is a daily. You will be less likely to lose uh, the trade that you're entering. So if you compare this to, let's say, For you to get uh, at an all-time high, which is actually on this other side. Let me change it. As you can see, we expect you expect to gain 13%, uh, which is uh, to its all-time high. I hope you can see all. I hope you can see this. It's previous all-time high, and please remember, it's the only index that hasn't uh, gotten uh, that hasn't fully recovered uh, its pre uh, since uh, COVID hit. As you can see, we are going all the way there. But if you use your risk management, you get you 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 are set out to uh, lose ten percent, but the possibilities are endless because we haven't uh, yet seen a full recovery on this index. So if let's say we go the price all the way from let's say uh, 79 all the way to let's say there that's a 36 percent gain and please note let me show you using another index what I really mean this is the the SPX is the you can see where is it since COVID hit you can see where it currently is. Now, let me show you the gains that it has. You can see we are at 26%. It 
increase already since pre-pandemic times. So it's not as different as these others. So uh, please buy the UK stock, uh, the UK index uh, and the European, is it? Let me see. Let me see if it's, uh, I keep forgetting, I keep forgetting uh, how it's called because of a lot of this, they keep changing. So let me check for you. Two indexes that should be on your mind, the UK stock, the UK index, the German index have been preaching to you a lot of the times. And uh, yes, SX5E. Here we go. As you can see, the the European, the, the European index, the whole European index currently has fully recovered since COVID and it's going all the way up. So if you were to get uh, to its previous all times high, which was in December, 1999, in the year 2000, if you are to move from now there all the way, you can see we are aiming for a 37% increase or, or gains in your portfolio. So which is, which is very good. Uh, comparing you to just comparing compared to uh, a 10% decline 10% volatility decline so all the way it's going all the way up because of a few simple things i've told you i've told you uh, it's because of the manufacturing pmi uh, the services pmi rather which is uh, going to boom a lot and the planning of to them to the, of the european side to reopen the economy by the end of may and as you can see, more good news that actually happened is EU ready to discuss COVID vaccine patent uh, waiver. This will help actually help people to now start manufacturing the vaccine uh, to improve the vaccine, to stop uh, the reports of blood clots, uh, side effects, the major side effects that are getting people to, stop, uh, to actually hesitate on taking the vaccine. It's, it's happening on the American side, it's happening on the, on the European side, and the best thing is that uh, the G7 meeting that is currently ongoing, is it ongoing or is, did it end? There was a G7 meeting uh, somewhere. I think I lost the chart. Uh, it's somewhere, I'll, I'll, look for, I'll look for it later. So that's about it, uh, the European stock market. Now, the the stocks that you should actually be buying on the European side is are including transport because people need to travel, people will travel. Uh, so you look at airline stocks, oil is the other thing that you should be looking out for. As you can see, let's see, it's the UK oil. So we are currently trading at pre-pandemic levels here at, uh, as you can see, uh, we are fully, we are just there around there, as you can see. So there is a lot of room for oil to push towards the upside. There is a lot of room for oil to push towards the upside. Uh, we could see oil trading back to 120. Uh, once we break uh, this support resistance around this area, we could see oil push even higher. This is not supposed to be here. We could see oil push towards the upside completely because of uh because of you once the re people reopen people will travel a lot of uh, a lot of people will need uh fuel to to you know carry on their even if um industry is just 26 percent 25.6 percent of their gdp contribution you, you really need to know that uh, a lot of diesel is going to be consumed and these services some use electric uh, some use generators uh people need to travel people use cars and once everything is now back into its place, people, the, cons the amount of consumption that is going to occur is going to be linked directly to UK oil. So uh, once uh, the month ends, so keep on looking at this trade, but once the month ends on May 31st, and they decide now the policies that they are going to come up with, say, you know what, we are going to open the country. This is the, these are the phases we are going to open the country with, uh, be on the lookout and buy. UK oil as we continue going towards the upside. So this is going to be roughly, if you are going to 
uh, let's say, let's give it a positive of 115. So it's a 69% gain, 69.33% increase in your portfolio. But, I've to, but as I've told you, before you enter these trades, you really need to know uh, how, uh, how these pairs volatility, the volatility of these pairs during uh, the day, week, and month. Then you can calculate. Let's say, for example, uh, for oil, uh, let's give it uh, assuming this, this are, these are not confirmed. I'll look for the website, then I share it with you. Uh, for oil, let's say, let's give it, as you can see, oil is not as volatile unless during catastrophic uh, catastrophic events. And as you can see, uh, after the financial crash of 2008, you can see oil uh, actually moved with a solid pace towards the upside and it gained from its bottom down, we gained 233%. So if this is any data to go by, then let's see. If this is any data to go by, then we have a lot of room for oil to keep on pushing towards the upside. So this is another sweet trade that you really need to take into consideration. Or as I was saying about the, let's say for example, the volatility around here, let's give it, uh, let's give it a, a rough 14%. This is just a daily on the daily, because as you can see here, it's, it's all about the same all through the volatility in this pair. So if uh, you can be able to wait, uh, if, you are, if you can place your stop loss, if your account is able to, to account for this, to account for this uh, margin of error, uh, not margin of error, this margin of uh, volatility and place your stop loss around here, then I think you'll be in the long game and uh, you, you risk 14% to gain 65%. So if you do the difference, uh, you will see you are, it's roughly, is it three times? Yeah, three yeah. times. It's roughly three times uh, what is, is, is uh, on the upside. So that is what I keep telling you about the three is to one ratio, but sometimes eh, it's not about, it's, it's more complicated than that. So that's how you plan for your trades. So just not, just because I've said buy uh, does not mean you should buy into it directly or immediately. Uh, that's why your own analysis is always recommended because once you see, uh, let's say for example, if, if tomorrow they come up with, uh, let's see the economic calendar. If let's say for example, uh, something is to happen, and as you all know, I keep telling you don't trade on Friday because on Friday is when now all the volatility breaks loose. I think this is for today. Let's see this week. Friday is when volatility breaks loose. So as you can see, today's on Thursday, tomorrow will be on Friday. So uh, where are we, where are we? Friday. So let's say for example, pound construction PMI. Let's say for example, this comes out to be, let's say 60, 60.0 it will be registered here as worse as possible and the markets will react will react big time to it on the other side and you see causing volatility causing volatility on this side and that's why many of you lose trades uh because you trade on friday when the market is you know uh is pricing in for monday so that when when monday opens it can either open have you ever noticed that uh, when, when the market closes on Friday on an all-time high, Monday, everything opens. Monday, everything opens uh, in red. Now, every, now, everybody's, now everybody starts telling you, ah, the markets, you know, are from an all-time high, they're opening in the red uh, as the market prices in. But we as traders, we know, uh, if you're smart about it, you know, what if you know if you really know what drives the market then uh by all means you stand a chance to profit from all this so on my side i think uh that's about it from from the uh european market side so uh a recap of what i've told you uh an eye on the uk 
uh, on the UK index, which is a very good long-term buy because of the services PMI and every and and uh, manufacturing PMI, everything has come out positive. Uh, two is the European um, uh, stock market. There is the the UK and the European, which is they are two different, but they play the same role. You have understood that, so that's a very good long-term buy. Then there is a UK oil. Once everything starts to reopen, starts to reopen uh, by the end of the month, because that's when they are planning, they are planning to reopen. Uh, then uh, we could see uh, oil all the way up. Then last but not least, please do your due diligence. Is it due diligence? Do your research. Let me just say, do your research on how on risk management, because I always tell you risk management is key. Uh, last year I didn't, I never used to, last year I never used to participate, uh, I never used to take risk management into consideration because you, you know when you're a new trader, you, you always, uh, there is a lie that uh, we, we, are, we, we were kept on being told that uh, in, in the market, uh, you make money, you can just uh, like in 10 minutes make 30K, not uh, in putting into consideration how what it takes, uh, what it takes for you to keep, uh, what it takes for you to be profitable. So risk management is key. So for uh, the person who has joined us now, here's the thing, for risk management to work, you need to know how the pair moves uh, in a week, in a in a day, week, and month, the volatility. How volatile is the pair on average? Some some are ten percent, some are zero point eight five percent. You really need to know. So I've given here an example of oil. Uh, as you can see, uh, the volatility of oil on on a regular basis, unless uh, very as you can see, this one day, another day. On average, you can see the volatility at around. 14 percent so when you're pricing in to buy consider that consider the volatility so you set your stop loss maybe below the volatility rate that you're not taken out of the trade or you just price in yourself properly depending on the broker sometimes the brokers have huge margins that just take you out even if you are but put that into consideration and the thing on the other side, let's say, and as I've told people, once the UK economy is open up, then you expect to see oil shoot even high. It will not shoot up at once. So you will see a pattern of up, down, high highs and high lows as we continue moving uh, towards the upside. So I have 10 minutes and I think I have explained what is required. So from the top again, oh, and last but not least, before I forget, the companies that you need to buy uh, in the European side, they should be travel based. Look for companies in the UK. Your broker has, I believe your broker has Euro European equities and uh, American equities. On the European side, just check for all the companies that deal with uh, transportation. And by transportation, I don't mean Mercedes Benz, BMW, no. I mean uh, companies like EasyJet, uh, British Airways, if they are present. You know, all that you need to check on those companies that are travel based because people in the UK really like to travel. And I think with that, uh, the Zoom session is uh, over. I think I have 10 minutes, five minutes. I think I'll just take a few questions and make it brief. So anyone with a question, I'm here to answer. Okay, you might have answered this earlier, but I maybe I ask uh, European markets and American markets. Um, in your opinion, are they both at par or is there one that is more stronger than the other? They are both different because everything that drives uh, these economies are different. As I, I think you let me let me see if I can get this before okay do this uh just just type in on your on your google search uh what drives as in i've i told people let me see i don't know if i've 
I hope I haven't removed it. I haven't. So uh, here we go. So I really need you to, you see, on this side, the GDP contribution, composition sector, uh, the people who, who came in earlier, 1.6% is agriculture, 25.6% is industry, then 74% is services. Now, if you check on the American side, the service, uh, the industry is larger, the, uh, the industry contribution is larger than the services. So that's the major difference between these two economies. That's okay, so you need difference. to focus on what is driving the market at that point, okay. Yeah. I have seven minutes. Bring in your questions. Contributions. Adam, there's always a Bitcoin. Whichever. You can ask about Bitcoin, you can ask about Hello. anything. Hey, Niaje. Fiti, fiti. Ini, sija, sija wana ujongelelea gold. Aha. Sasa, ata ni kwambi. One thing uh, I won't talk about metals is because of this. Uh, metals, every metal currently uh, let me just open one. I hope Sita Shiko on a time. Uh, metals is known as they are gaining because of uh, this inflation data coming out. But as but you've been you've been you've been a trader for a while. I, I believe because Tulianza and I campus, you've been a trader for a while to know that uh, US ten year bonds actually bonds are what are driving these things. Bonds are what mm -hmm. are, are driving. Uh, these metals. So whenever the bonds start going up, you will see these metals going down because investors don't like putting their money where things are volatile. They like putting money where everything is safe. But when you see the bonds start dropping, that's when you will see gold going up. So until you understand the correlation between US 10-year bonds and, and, and gold as, as a method of hedging against inflation or a method of putting um, your investment into safer places, because you remember the US government can't default on its debt because they have the power to print their own money. So once you understand that, don't trade gold as a, as a, as a, as a thing of... I don't know whether you can see this, but this is a demo. I don't know whether you can see the negative something on this side. So if you are, if you are not cautious about metal, metals, uh, they will zitakufanya mbaya. You need to understand the correlation on government ten-year bonds. Uh, what is driving? Uh, what you, re you really need to know what Jerome Powell is saying, or the Fed, or the Federal Reserve. What it's saying for you to understand how to trade gold. Because one uh, people put their money there as a hedge against inflation, uh, while the other ten-year bonds people put there in form of as a long-term investment to pro to protect their money from being wiped out by the market's volatility. That's about it. So Kielewa is on Billy, you good. But the only thing with that, uh, the only difference it akujia ni silver. Silver silver is a very interesting metal. Yes, it's a hedge against inflation, but a lot of this uh, electric, the way you are moving electric, silver is being used in a lot of, uh, in a lot of manufacturing. So is copper. So is uh, platinum, is it platinum or, or planadium, whichever. Platinum, I think platinum. Plat yeah. Uh, platinum. Yeah, it depends on the industrial use of that, of the other thing. So you really need to know because gold uh, really use, is really being used. The amount of gold being used in circuits and, and, uh, and electronics is quite minimal compared to what silver and copper. You know, copper in the Trumikanga poison is a steamer. So you really need to understand all that. Once you understand uh, which, which metals, what role a metal plays, then we are good to go. And I think uh, with that, at least I've given you an insight on what to do. Any other question? It's, it's recorded, it's recorded. I think I'll just put it on. YouTube uh, tomorrow morning.
Any other question before the session is terminated? Uh, the, car the current broker I'm working with is Think Markets. Uh, that's the current broker I'm using. Uh, that's because I uh, uh, because uh, in Nato the services that the Nyana provide, the tools, the everything the Nyana provide is quite is quite interesting to me. They are quite good because they they the Kenyana provide. Uh, it provides uh, metals that are not tradable. Other brokers don't have commodities that other brokers don't have. Bitcoin that other pro pro brokers don't have. So that's currently I'm using Think Markets, and the margins are are quite good. I think I sent a link to the group uh, for Think Markets. Hmm? Uh, you you can just text me on WhatsApp. Uh, I'll help you open an account. Step by step. So, any other question? Uh, we have fifty seconds. Uh, I think no takers. So yeah, thank you guys for joining in. Uh, I think I'll be doing this on a Thursday. Uh, post market. I think I'll be calling it post market analysis, uh, and post and pre. Post is to check what the markets has done the previous week, and pre is uh, the during using the data that we have seen uh, today. Uh, this week, how can we use it to benefit the coming week? So I think I'll be doing it either on Friday or Thursday, depending. I think I'll be doing it on Friday uh, because I don't trade on Friday after I've done my analysis and everything. So yeah, thank you very guy. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for joining the Zoom meeting. Uh, keep uh, adding your friends to the Think Markets, and yeah, I think it's a wrap. Good night. Patanembele.